So last Friday I was lecturing out at the University of Western Sydney and I was lecturing about ethics, me and ethics. Now I know there are some people in this room who probably think that, that that's a bit of an oxymoron, you know, me, me and ethics. But it was sort of a, an interesting sort of day and, and it was a, a youth group, a group of about 30 young people training to be youth workers um, in the community. And I was dressed like the average vicar, you know, I, I had the, 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 the dog, dog collar on and I had a really nice blue shirt and, and my cream slacks and a pair of sensible shoes and, you know, I just looked like, you know, the, the everyday, run-of-the-mill, middle-aged, somewhat tired, somewhat sort of worn-out vicar. And I look like that most of the time, by the way, but you know, <laughs> I think I look particularly more like that on Friday. Now, it was quite to the, obvious, I think, to those young people that we lived in two different generations. Like, you know, actually, not just one generation removed, but almost three generations removed. And, you know, they sort of looked at me and thought, well, what's this silly old fart going to say? And they made their observations, their initial observations, based pretty much on how I looked. And to be honest, that was okay with me last Friday because I didn't particularly feel like being confrontational. You know, some days you get like that. You just want to say what you've got to say. You know, tonight I have my robes on and, and apart from those of you who know me, I, I probably look pretty much the picture of the boring Christian vicar, a bit like Reverend Lovejoy, perhaps from The Simpsons. You know, I'm about to impart to you some deep and meaningful truth truth that has little to do with real life and even less to do with fun or sexuality. You know, that's, we do that, us speakers, don't we? We just look boring. <laughs> we just can't help it, you know? Now, one of the young people that was at the lecture on Friday knew about Leather Pride Week. He was a young gay boy, I think. He didn't say so, but you know, where else do you find out about Leather Pride Week at the <laughs> University of Western Sydney? Let's be real serious here, you know. And he knew about Leather Pride Week, he'd seen the ads, and he made a really derogatory comment, a really nasty derogatory comment about so-called leather people. And it made me think just how much emphasis we put on, you know, on what people wear and, and how we often, even in the gay community and even here in our own church community, get ready to condemn without thinking because of what people are wearing or, or, or the fact that they don't do the same thing as us or they don't live their lives the same way as us. You know, I have often thought, you know, what is it that allows sort of this church to find such an affinity with many parts of our leather community, with many of our leather brothers and sisters? And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but to me it feels natural for us tonight to have a leather pride service. You know, it's kind of no big deal. You know, and, and, and what is it? You know, what is it that, that makes the two organisations sort of knit together a little bit? Now, now, before I go much further, I need to get rid of some of this sort of conservative Christian garb. And I was going to do something really spectacular, but, but unfortunately, the zipper on my, um, on my chaps gave way. You see? So... Rather than terrify you all, I just ended up with my boring leather vest. Now, the gay way as I came, that's why I went out. You know? I'm walking down the aisle and saying, something's wrong here. Now, it must be a very, very weak zipper, I'm sure. Someone's getting fat, says young Jonathan Jones, our youth pastor, who needs me to sign his documentation to get ordained, but forgets it. But you see, where did I put that silly thing? Oh dear, oh dear. Shane's going to hate me. <laughs> you know, just by doing what I've just done, and had I had my chaps on, it probably would have been a little bit scarier. Um, I have opened myself. <laughs> I've opened myself to condemnation by many outside of the walls of this building, by many outside of the walls of this church, and maybe even by one or two within it. You see, you know, we have an expectation of what people are going to look like and how they're going to act in certain places. And in many places, to be a vicar and a member of the leather community is just not right. And to be a member of the leather community and a member of the church is just not right. 
you know, and, and there are many sort of expectations we have of people that we see played out in such a way that they actually deny the wholeness of people and the ability for people to interact in a spiritual, emotional and physical way. But back to the question, how can it feel so natural for this church to celebrate this community tonight? What is it that connects us together? And I, I sort of thought about that since Jonathan told me that I had to preach. Jonathan was going to preach, you see, and as I said, he met with Philip, and I don't know if Philip scared him or whatever Philip did, but Jonathan came back and said, oh, Craig, I really don't think <laughs> I know enough about all of this to preach tonight. Now, this was yesterday. God bless Jonathan. It normally takes me a whole week to put a sermon together. But what is it? What is it? <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> It, what is it that makes this church and the leather community feel so comfortable with each other? And I thought about it and I thought about some of the, the words that sort of filter through that are part of the leather pride community. Words like safe and sane, consensual, pride, self-respect, dignity, I've heard all of those words uttered at one time or another or similar words meaning similar things by my brothers and sisters in the leather community. You know, for, for years the leather community in Sydney has been out and in your face and proud. For years the leather community has talked about and encouraged behaviour, the, the safe sex practices. And, and I think in a lot of ways we're, we're sort of leaders in that, that whole area of, of saying, you know, safety, safe sex is what it's about. For years the leather community has encouraged people to be sane about their interaction with others and to constantly remember the shared humanity of those we interact with and ourselves. For years the leather community sort of has encouraged consensual behaviour where the fears and concerns and the joys of all parties are considered. And for years it has encouraged self-respect and dignity and pride and a joyous celebration of our sexuality in a myriad of different ways. As so I thought about it yesterday and today, I thought, you know, aren't they the very things that we as Christians, that this church holds dear? We may use different words, but aren't they similar to the words that we use, things like dignity and respect and pride and care and passion. Aren't these also things that we find in scripture that talk to us about a life lived by our Saviour and, and a life that we could live? Yeah, maybe that is why I and many in this church find an affinity with much of the leather community. And maybe it is why many in the leather community have chosen to support this church over many, many years. Selflessly. With enormous amounts of money. You, you would, the amount of money that the Leather Pride community has generated for this church in the last 10 years alone, through donations, allowing us to run cloakrooms and what have you, it's thousands upon thousands of dollars. There are many who are only too willing to condemn those who they don't understand or those who look or act differently. And all too often we are influenced by appearance or what others think and miss the truth of God's all-embracing grace. And you know there are times when I find more spiritual truth amongst my brothers and sisters in the leather community than I often find in many churches outside the walls of this building.